welcome back you guys it's been five minutes since i filmed my whole state auditor video so if you're tuning in for the q a welcome if you have not watched my video about being a state auditor i would probably recommend watching it first just because i may cover some questions that you have already as i talked about what i do for work how it's kind of different than being an external auditor for a firm but let's go ahead and get started so i asked on my instagram story if you guys had any questions about what i do for work or what it's like being a state auditor i got a lot more questions than i was expecting so that's why I decided to do this in a whole separate video just because I know that that last video is going to be so terribly long, which you guys already know because you've probably already watched it. I haven't edited it yet, so I don't know. But yeah, I'm just going to jump right into it. So, hi Heaven, do you get lots of training seminars provided at work? I did cover this in the last video, but you didn't know that. But yes, we have all kinds of trainings. Every spring we get to sign up for whatever trainings we're interested in. And we also have lots of trainings that we have to participate in, such as the new government standards being issued that year. For those of us that have certifications and not just a CP we have CFEs, we have CISAs, CGFMs. There's lots of certifications that people have in our workplace, but they all need CPE. So we are very appreciative of that. What is the biggest difference between internal and external government audit? There's a huge difference between internal audit and external audit. I do believe there's some sort of audit team that audits our entire organization internally, meaning that they are an employee for us, but they also look out for any kind of discrepancies, any kind of fishy business going on. They look into it before we end up in peer review and someone else finds it. I'm not well versed in internal audit. I have no experience in internal audit, but my girl Steffi, if you guys check out her video, she did an entire video about internal audit because she's an internal audit manager and she's had years of experience doing it. So check out her video. I just watched it again yesterday and it's very well organized, very informational. I highly recommend that video if you want to know more about internal audit. But we are, as state auditors, we are external auditors. Another question came from one of my high school teachers. We are salaried, but we have to sign in and out of work. They said it's a comptroller thing? That's a good question. I actually did some research after she asked this question because I was like, I'm not really sure. And I didn't really find anything. So I'm not exactly positive. The only thing I could figure is from a administrative point of view, when they're handing out raises or bonuses, promotions, they can see the time that you've put in at work. But I do think it's unfair specifically in the teaching profession because a lot of my friends that are teachers do a lot of work at home. So they're not on the clock. They've already clocked out for the day, but they're still doing a lot of work. I'm not really sure the answer is I don't know. <laughs> what jobs can I get without a CPA and with a CPA also do you think it's worth getting a CPA? I absolutely think it's worth it, but I will be the one person that will tell you that it is not for everybody. Depending on where you wanna work or what you wanna do, I don't think you have to get the CPA. I know every professor in college slams it down your throat. Your workplace may even be pressuring you into getting it. And there's a lot of like firms that will make you get it for sure. And that's because if your firm is a CPA firm, then you should probably be a CPA. But for like a normal average industry accountant that say you work for Target and you're a staff accountant for Target internally, I personally don't think it's necessary to have a CPA, but when you're applying for any job and you're going to have candidates up against each other that have had experience in accounting, they're most likely going to go with the CPA. But on the other end of that, if you don't have a CPA, they technically don't have to pay you as much. So it's cheaper for them on the salary side, but that's hard on you because you could get paid more for your CPA, but it also is very expensive to get takes a long time to get. It's a lot of dedication. You have to put your life on hold for a while. So I don't think it's just, oh yeah, CPA is great. I'm gonna go get my CPA. Like if you guys saw my vlogs during the whole CPA journey, it was a huge sacrifice. But what jobs can I get without a CPA? Um, my job that I work at, a lot of my coworkers are not CPAs. They have no intention on getting a CPA. Um, so you can be a state auditor. You can work internally for most companies. I will say you will most likely be capped off on promotions without your CPA. Like most management, supervisors, um, especially at firms, you can only go so far without having a license. But again, there are tons of jobs that do not have a CPA. But anyways, I am already talking way too long. Next question. Are internships required to become a legislative auditor after college? No, they're not required, but internships are huge in the accounting profession. However, due to your family situation or your life, if you're going back to college later in life, you don't really have time to do an internship. They don't pay that well all the time. Now I will say I got paid really well and I had that tax internship but I worked a million hours a week so it's kind of balanced out. I don't think it's required. Um, several of my coworkers did not have internships but if you can get an internship I would definitely highly recommend it if it fits in your schedule and your life plan per se. Next question why the government and not big four audit firms? I did an entire video about why public accounting is not for me. The short answer is we have a very high work-life balance in government and I definitely appreciate that. Next question what are the difference between legislative auditors and external auditors? There is no difference. We are external to the entity that we audit. And if we have any independence problems, let's say 
say I took a class at one of the colleges that I wouldn't be able to audit them. Actually, I don't know if that would cross over independence, but you guys get what I'm saying. If I had a spouse that worked internally at one of the colleges, I definitely would not get to audit them. So we have to be independent and we come in externally from the state to audit the client. Next question, how can I get a government accounting job? I would say apply for one. <laughs> it's a common misconception that you have to know somebody to get into a state job because they are highly desirable for a lot of people. I didn't know anybody at all. I literally went to the Meet the Firms event, talked to the lady at the booth and was like, holy crap, she is singing my song. This is where I need to work. It was like all the stars aligned and the Lord had spoken over me that this is where I need to work. But yeah, just apply for one. Next question, what's the worst part or things with it that are different than you anticipated about your job? What a good question. The worst part of my, my job I wasn't anticipating, I will say this is common in most audit positions, but there is a lot of waiting time, a lot of downtime when you've requested all you need for your audit from the client and they're busy. You're sitting there with not much to do. My manager always finds something to give us. <laughs> so we'll just be sitting there reading Gatsby for three days. Those are the worst times. And those are the times that I would recommend staff to take leave. Give yourself a nice four day weekend while you're waiting on stuff. There is always something constructive that you could be working on, but I didn't anticipate so much waiting time. There's a nice balance between being firm with the client saying, hey, I need this by Friday. And then being rude to where they're just gonna not give you anything because you ticked them off. But also also not to be walked on. Sometimes I'm too nice or too friendly or too understanding. And like recently with this CARES Act, um, my clients are having to disperse CARES funds to the students. And that was really stressful. It's the first time we've ever had a pandemic in their lifetimes. So um, I am understanding. I know it's a lot of work, plus all the staff are working from home. So they have less communication with other divisions, but it does kind of suck when you're sitting there with like nothing to do. So yeah, I'd say that's the first part. Is there a lot of turnover in government like public accounting? <laughs> I can't speak for the other state governments or an I can't, definitely can't speak for federal government, but absolutely very low turnover. On my current audit that I'm about to start, we have somebody that's worked here 22 years, 42 years, 23 four or 25 years, 15 years, and then me, two and a half years. My best friend at work, he hired on right after me, so he's right about. I've actually worked here for almost three years. I keep saying two and a half. Two and a half was in March, but close to three years. Not that it matters. <laughs> if you can discuss this, what types of clients do you serve? Colleges, cities, fire departments, etc. Yeah, that's a good question. I personally only audit colleges and universities, but my division audits the state agencies, like I mentioned in the last video. I'm in state audit. We also have local government audit. They audit all the cities and counties. The city of Knoxville, the city of Cleveland, um, Knox County. And we have 95 counties in Tennessee. It's a lot. I think we have outsourced a couple counties to CPA firms, but we audit like 90 of the counties. Fire departments, school boards, like health departments. But yeah, really any client that receives public funds um, if they're funded by any kind of taxpayer dollars, if they're getting federal grants, then most likely we audit them. Don't forget to talk about the accounting resume, please. I've gotten the opportunity to sit on a panel of interviews, interviewing students that want to take an internship with us because we do offer a summer internship. And that was really fun. The things that I look for, extracurricular activities, definitely we want a high GPA or just, you know, something above a 3.0 probably. Internships are always a plus. We're going to interview anybody that has other internships. But I think the difference with government sector is we really look for someone that appreciates that work-life balance. If they're involved in a lot of community stuff or other organizations at your school, I think that's a huge plus for us. Somebody that just is has a really strong work ethic that just wants to work all the time every day would probably be disappointed in government because we do get every single weekend off. We work four day weeks a lot of the time, but there's nothing like specific I would say that we look for in a resume that others don't. I will say you don't need an internship in government to work in government. That's rare anyways. <laughs> I mean, it would definitely help but I don't think you should stress yourself on turning down firm internships or company internships. My friend Christy is your dream job what you're doing now or something else. <laughs> I ask myself this every day. So recently in November I had interviewed with what I thought was my dream job at the time. It was to be a fraud investigator and I was super ecstatic. I thought for sure that was going to take the job. I went through the entire interview process. It was brutal. It was very intense, very intimidating but I got offered the job which was really nice and I prayed about it but it just didn't feel right. I can't explain it. I don't know. I don't know
know why I didn't take the job. I'm glad I didn't because I'm happy where I'm at. But at the same time, I think I just had to trust my gut. So I thought that being more in the fraud investigative field would be my dream job, but apparently it's not. <laughs> I'm definitely happy here. I don't know. Did your job encourage you to take the CPA? Yes, they did encourage it. They encourage it when you hire on. They want you to have 150 credits to work for us. It's not required, but it is encouraged. Again, I mentioned in the last video, but I think it goes a long way when the auditors are CPAs, when some of our clients are CPAs. It just looks better. There's more credibility, more competence, appearance, even if you're not all that smart, if you have your CPA, it goes a long way, but you don't have to have it. How much do you make in the government sector? I'm not gonna give you an exact number. I definitely don't mind to be transparent with it, but the mass majority of people, especially if they don't live in the US, don't understand the different cost of livings. Living here in Knoxville is a whole lot cheaper than even three hours down the road in Nashville. It's a lot more expensive in Nashville. Living here in Tennessee versus living in New York City or living in Los Angeles is a huge difference. Even just buying gas. Our gas is like $2 a gallon. And back out in California, it's like five or $6 a gallon. But all of our salaries are published online. It is common knowledge because the taxpayers are paying for us to work so it's good for them to know how much we make so if you really want to know you can google it and i will definitely say that every single state is different there are a lot of state audit positions in other states that don't get paid very well and somebody had asked me if i had to start a youtube channel to make more money because i wasn't making enough in government y'all i don't make hardly nothing on youtube i bring in about a hundred dollars a month from youtube after all the effort i go in for these videos i definitely don't do it for the money <laughs> each video i put up takes about eight hours to edit. Based on meetings or trainings, do you see young faces in the government sector? It sounds like you're the youngest in your office from what you share in the videos. <laughs> that question made me laugh because yes, I am one of the youngest that I work with. I definitely prefer it that way. I've always liked being around older, mature people. We definitely hire a lot of college students as well, but I think it takes maturity and figuring out your life a little bit to realize that you appreciate a work-life balance. The firms definitely steal a lot of the college students and I think that's totally fine. And a lot of people People do it for the resume they want to go ahead and get that experience out of the way we do have a lot of older people but also the people that i work with don't leave and i think that's really great we also have great health benefits retirement benefits and pension so there's reasons for that but anyways you guys those are the questions that i got on instagram sorry for this really awkward and abrupt transition but there's something important that i forgot to mention in either one of these videos we do have an is audit division information systems if that's something you'd be more interested in i believe they're hiring right now so that's why i wanted to go ahead and let you guys know so yeah sorry about that. So I hope these two videos helped you guys get kind of a better understanding about my job or why I love it or kind of just what makes the state auditor a little different. You can email me if you have any more specific questions at heavensoddventure at gmail.com and I will try to get back with you. But yeah you guys hopefully you enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye!